YouTube founder community, Brian Wilson and Van Dyke Parks fans, random people on the internet. My name is Giggins and we're here today to talk about Brian Wilson and Van Dyke Parks album, Orange Crate Art, which came out through Warner Brothers Records in 1995. This is an album that just recently got reissued for 2020 for its 25th anniversary on a really cool uh, double disc vinyl set, one being green, one being orange. And uh, I missed out on that one. I sold out way too fast. So I just have the original CD for now. It's a great album. Off the bat, it's a really wonderful album. The critics weren't the big fan, biggest fans of it when it came out. Um, you know, calling it a bit wordy and hard to memorize or, you know, having melodies that don't really stick with you, which I find that completely false. Um, and I also think if you're a fan of Smile, you'll basically dig what they're doing here. Obviously, it's not the same thing, but there's minor similarities here. Um... Basically, after the thing with Landy ended, Brian's life started over again. And Van Dyke came up to him and said, Hey, I really want to make something with you. You know, let's put something out with our names on it that actually comes out. Because <laughs> Smile never happened. Let's actually release something. And there's a story that Van Dyke went to visit Brian, who was in a, a room watching a TV that was turned off. And if that's true, man. Um... And he brought him in. And so Brian basically just did all the vocal arrangements on this thing. It was written and produced and orchestrated and everything else by Van Dyke. Um, and Danny Hutton sings on some songs in the background, which is pretty cool. Their old friend Danny from back in the day. Um, this was such a productive time for Brian. This project really propelled him into the 90s and to do so much more. I mean, he started working on this, the 30th anniversary box that came out. Um, he started working on the... I just was a man for these times movie with Don Waz and the subsequent uh, soundtrack for it, the Pet Sounds box set, the new Beach Boys music, the Imagination album. I mean, he was busy in the '90s, so thanks to this album coming out, this really sort of got him up to speed when they started working on this thing in 1993. And unfortunately, as Van Dyke Park said, it when it came out and sank without a trace. Um, it was promoted, but it just didn't do well, and. It's, it's sad to say that because it's a really fantastic album. It's dense, it's layered, it's rich, and Brian has sounded, never sounded better at this point um, than other recordings on this album. So it opens up with the title song, Orange Crate Art, which um, orange crates used to, um, maybe they still do, but they'd come in these orange crates, these wooden crates, with different forms of art on the side for whatever grove the orange, oranges came from, which is kind of what inspired Sunflower, with that title, but I love this song. It's a great opening track. It's got sort of an Americana bluegrass guitar underneath it, lush orchestrations, very many multi-layered vocals from Brian. Um, and it's just a, a, a treat for your ears to hear all this stuff going on. Brian's falsetto is really solid, and I like the chord changes and storytelling. It's got a very nostalgic kind of feel, which this whole album is a nostalgic love letter to California, if you will, a postcard to California. Um, you know, definitely worthy of naming the album after this track. Sail Away, there's a second track on here. It rocks along really well, and Brian sounds so confident here. I'm going to say that a lot throughout this album because Brian's vocals on this album are a man reborn. He sounds so invigorated and so determined and so enthusiastic about his performances that he's really given it a million percent, which hasn't sounded like that in a very long time before this record came out. But this track is so uplifting and inspiring, and the middle bit with the steel drums really works well. I just love this song. The expression of optimism that's outpouring from it is, is super catchy. Um, My Hobo Heart is the third song on here. Very Gershwin-type track on this one, and that goes for a lot of these songs, too. They've got that very 20s, 30s feel. And the last song on here is, in fact, a Gershwin song. Um, but again, Brian's enthusiasm here, very fun to listen to. Wings of a Dove is track four, and it's kind of a lightweight, carefree song, um, but I really like the chord changes and the dense layering of the instrumentation on here. The accordion, get, getting this, I'm hoping that's Van Dyke playing the accordion because he's really good at it. Um, but again, another vocal performance from Brian where he's charged up and ready to take on the world. Track five is one of my favorites on the album, uh, Palm Tree and Moon. This is a really pleasant ballad that has lots of descending harmonies, which if you've watched my channel before, you know I'm a sucker for descending harmonies. Um, really nice old timey feel and I'm not sure it's one of those songs where it's like why did the critics pan this album this song is super catchy 
um, you know, the whole put it in a letter and then the musical refrain that follows that, it's a total earworm. This song sticks in your head. I love the imagination and the storytelling on this one. And the, it just takes you to some other foreign place. I guess California. Fantastic song. Summer in Monterey continues this feel of traveling the Old West. It's, it, this is a song for me that sounds like a family in the back of an old, you know, 57 Chevy taking a long cross-country trip and they're all singing along, you know. That's what it sounds like to me. Um, it's reflective and dreamy. And it's sometimes sly. It's got these moments of like, like kind of coy, sly chords. Um, but really fun to listen to. I, I really dig that song a lot. San Francisco is the next track on here. This is one of my favorites on the album. And if you pick up this album here, just a couple of songs, make sure San Francisco is one of them. I love that giddy up intro. Um, to me, it sounds like really heavy merry-go-round music. Um, but the vocal changes on this, uh, on this song the amount of work that Brian put in to make this really imaginative vocal presentation, it's like, wow, where has this guy been? You could tell he was being suffocated for years where he couldn't release all of this imaginative uh, vocal interplay and construction and layering. And it really shows just how imaginative and brilliant this guy is that he could put all this stuff together and make it sound so fun to listen to. And you get lost in picking out the layers. I mean, where has this Brian been? You know, up until this, if I had heard this album in 1995, I would have been like, wow, where has this Brian been? Because it's just fantastic. Hold Back Time is the, uh, the eighth song on here. Almost a vaudevillian feel on this one. Slightly Caribbean. Um, and again, more of that nostalgic kind of writing about the past. Not a bad song. You know, pleasant little track. My Janine. Uh, I love the bass harmonica. Very pet sounds to hear that thing. More old-timey vibes, of course, and Brian's vocals are so warm and dedicated on this one. Um, and he hits a couple of vocal, there's a couple of vocal moments on here where he hits a certain note, and it's kind of like, wow, I know he can do that. You know, he's got some moments on this song, it's like, wow. So really dig that one. Number 10, Movies is Magic. Not my favorite one on here. Um, you know, it's got this big Hollywood intro, which is pretty cool. And, you know, it's kind of a story about movies and relationships and boys and girls and that kind of stuff. It's okay. Not my favorite thing on here. This Town Goes Down at Sunset. This one's pretty good, too. Um, nice sound effects with the crickets on here. I love the home on the range kind of vibe where, you know, it's just the story of a town rolling up the sidewalk at the end of the day and everyone going home and getting comfy and going to bed and, you know, living their daily normal kind of lives. Um, a nice little song. And then you end with Lullaby, which is a really good closer. You know, it's a George Gershwin track and it's an instrumental. But the orchestrations and the strings and, you know, the dynamics on here really make for a good closer. It's a good bookend on this one here. I really enjoy this album a lot. Um, and it's funny because it's not something I play that often, but when I do play it, I'm always kind of reminded of like, yeah, this is a really good album. But the artwork on here is fantastic. They have lots of pictures of like, you know, California-esque things like orange grooves and, you know, grapes, vineyards and all kinds of stuff. But look at this, look at this picture of Brian and Van Dyke. This looking so cool. And the booklet has the lyrics, so you can read along to the words as you go, but really nice pictures and paintings from the last 100 years. And the disc itself is a simple orange disc. And this is funny, because like I've, I've wanted to review this album for a while, and then when the reissue got announced, I wanted to do it then. So I'm a little late to the game with talking about this thing, but... I love it. It's a great album. It's a lot of fun to listen to. Um, you know, hearing the two of them work together again is fantastic. And there's this, I don't remember if I told this already in, the, in, the, in this video, but when Brian got to the studio, he stepped up to the microphone and asked Van Dyke, what am I doing here? And Van Dyke hit the button to talk to Brian and said, you're here because I hate the sound of my own voice. And Brian was like, well, that makes sense. Let's go. <laughs> um, and kind of kicked him into gear there. But it's a great album. You know, it really is a great album. I mean, there's only a couple of songs on here that I'm kind of like, eh, about. But, you know, 90% of it, I highly, highly recommend. Hearing Brian's voice sound so confident and so on top of his game and the dense layering of vocals. I mean, this guy's talent is just unreal. And then hearing that against Van Dyke's really well put together chord changes and his his way he can describe 
a smell or a sound or a sight through music is captivating. So his musical score and the emotion that it brings out com com combined with Brian's vocal ability, you get a, a work of art, some orange crate art, if you will. So I'm giving this thing a nine out of 10. I think it's fantastic. It's definitely one you shouldn't pass up if you're a Beach Boys fan or if you're a Van Dyke Parks fan, which they go hand in hand, I would assume. But um, yeah, Van Dyke Parks and Brian Wilson, Orange Crate Art, 1995. Nine out of 10, I think it's a fantastic, fantastic album. That's it. My name is Giggins. This has been Brian and Van Dyke with their Orange Crate Art album. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are on this thing in the comments below, and we can talk about that and um, have a good time. So take care, drink some water, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.